Tonight on Unreported World, Shea Rhodes travels to Nigeria, where religion has become big business. Every week, thousands flock to miracle healing and prosperity preaching events organised by Pentecostal and independent churches. In the past 20 years, these churches have become so successful, they have expanded into global corporations. Shea travelled to Lagos and gained rare access to the world of the millionaire preachers. Preaching in Nigeria has become big business. And some Christian pastors are among the country's most famous celebrities. I'd come to see Dr. Sign Fireman, an up and coming preacher who's attempting to break into the big time. They kept on name to call you an Ohuki. Today, 2,000 people were at an event Dr. Fireman had built as the burial of Satan. Every Sunday, millions of Nigerians crowd into thousands of competing churches. The event started with worshippers who'd been unsuccessful in life or unlucky in love being invited to come forward. Many Nigerian Christians believe that demons are the root cause of their problems. They come to people like Dr. Fireman to have these demons exorcised. Lift up your hands. Satan is a liar. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. The devil is a liar. First, he awoke the demons in those who were said to be possessed. One, two, two. This, I was told, caused the demons to take control of the body. From now on, Dr. Fireman could supposedly control the demons and expel them from the person. Now, on your feet, fast! Now, go. This is an incredible spectacle. At times it's almost humorous, but there are thousands of people in this congregation and not a single one of them is laughing. Everyone takes this deadly seriously. In the name of Jesus. Then, sick members of the congregation were asked to come forward for miracle healing. One man told the crowd he was crippled and blind. Earlier I'd seen the man walking unaided, but no one else mentioned it. Other people were also supposedly healed. I wanted to quiz the sick people about these life-changing events, but none would speak to me. At the close of the event, the crowd swarmed forward and threw money at Dr. Fireman's feet. There was so much cash, it had to be collected in dustbins. As the congregation left, I wanted to know why people were giving so much money to Dr. Fireman. 
Valerie said those who gave were repaid by God with good fortune. She was one of those whose demons had been exercised. I really can't say what was happening most of the time. The only thing I know was I, I just told God what I wanted at home. I prayed to God and I, I told him some certain things about my marriage and I just wanted him to deal with some things. And have you been to other churches that work the same way? In my former church, we didn't have this kind of display of power. No, this is spectacular. With the service over, Dr. Fireman left in his yellow Hummer. It's hard to know how to feel about what I've just seen. Everybody in there seems to totally believe what they're told, but from my point of view, people who hobbled in half paralyzed have left in pretty much the same state. The only thing that seems to have changed is that the bag that was completely empty is now full of cash. In Nigeria, independent churches can be set up by anyone, and most operate outside the main Christian denominations. Some of the biggest churches have grown into international, multi-million pound corporations. I wanted to find out more about the business model that makes these organisations so successful. I went to meet Dr. Fireman in his downtown headquarters. Just turning up at the church offices, it looks like Dr. Fireman's here, but He's driving a different car this morning. In the lobby, I recognised one of the women who was said to have been possessed by demons at the service. Her name was Angel, and it turned out she was also Dr. Fireman's receptionist. Have you recovered? <laughs> the demons and... Angel said she had no memory of the exorcism. But really, it looked intense. Upstairs, I found Dr. Fireman having discussions with a publisher about a series of books he wants to print. He told me how he started out in the business of religion. I started preaching at the age of seven. I started writing book articles at the age of six. I started writing books at the age of 14. I established my first company at the age of 12. When I was 17, I had five companies running. How can a pastor become rich doing God's work? In the Bible, the word of God teaches that one-tenth of your income belongs to God. For Dr. Fireman, the principles of his business are simple. He teaches his worshippers to give him 10% of their income and tells them that his miraculous powers can change their lives. For example, in the church here, We've had countless dead people who were raised back to life. Many of them confirmed by doctors. Many of them carried from the hospital to the church. In some cases, I had to go to the hospital to pray. We have countless cases. Dr. Fireman's claims were hard to believe, but he insisted his God-given talents were real and he turned them into a successful brand. Father, we thank you. He claims that in just two years, the Perfect Christianity Ministry has expanded to 40 branches. Dr. Fireman now employs a team of associates to whom he's given the title pastor. In Jesus name. Amen. Some individually run the church branches. Today, they're having a strategy meeting on how to market the brand. God is a game. And you know the funny part of it? The game is very easy. You begin to discover he stressed the importance of advertising what their church can do in terms of miracles and healing. If you cannot make what you have to offer clear enough, people are not going to be enticed. People go to church but they are frustrated. So somebody has to answer their questions. So this he said generating money from the congregation was key to their growth and that any surplus income would be spent on expanding the church. Watching Dr. Fireman is quite interesting. I'm seeing a whole new side to him here. On Sunday, he was the rock star with his big entrance and his entourage. But today, he's more like a CEO, briefing all the managers in his company on exactly what he expects from them. 
One reason for the success of the Perfect Christianity mission is the cult of personality built up around Dr. Fireman. We followed him to one of his many public engagements. He'd been invited to open a new shopping centre by a member of his congregation. So everybody, say E S U S. Here in Nigeria, pastors are big celebrities, the kind of person who you want to associate with when you've got a big event on. His duties over, Fireman and his security details sped off. I stayed behind to speak to the shopping centre owner, Edward Dagogo. I wanted to know why evangelical preachers like Fireman are so popular here. Yeah, Fireman is the man that covers Nigeria and the nation. When he speaks, something happens. When he prophesies, something happens. Have you given a lot of tithes to the church? I do, I do. And that is why you see San Fireman himself today coming to commission this plaza. I see. Yes. So what, 10% of your income goes to Perfect goes Christian to Ministry? Church. Yeah, Perfect Ministry, yeah. Excellent. How much is that, roughly? <laughs> well, we're in Nigeria, we are, we are local areas, you know, yeah. we can't see... You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You'd rather, rather keep that close? Yes. I see. But 10% but of your income is a lot of money. A lot of money, but then to the Lord's side, it's nothing. It seems to me that here in Nigeria, being a Christian is very much about making money. Is that the case? Yeah, you know, this third world country, Nigeria, we are rich sometimes, we are poor. You know, so what are we looking for? So many people looking for miracles, for progress, miracles for prosperity, miracles for breakthrough, then ab above all, eternity, which everybody is seeking for. In a country of over 150 million people, 80% live on less than $2 a day. The aspiration for many is to achieve the Nigerian dream, to have and be seen to have cars, houses, money and power. Many of the new independent churches promise that if you follow them, your dreams will come true. There are now over 70 million Christians living in Nigeria and that number is growing faster here than anywhere else in the world. On the four roads around here, I've counted over 20 churches. There seems to be one every two or three blocks. There's another one just over there, the New Anointing Deliverance Ministries International. Just a huge number of churches in a very small space. Dr. Feynman's image seemed to tap into this idea of the Nigerian dream, of displaying your wealth openly. At his home in central Lagos, he showed me his three luxury cars worth over £150,000. Why yellow? When I was small, I always loved yellow. When I was small. Um, my mom bought me a yellow plate, a yellow spoon, and a yellow T-shirt. Everything had to be yellow. So until uh, now, I think I'm a yellow freak. Feynman was due to preach at one of his branches that evening so he went upstairs to change. Excellent. Style is a key element of his marketing. It's like if you have something that is very good, but the container is bad. Though the content is good, it's difficult to sell. We left for the service with a security escort. Fireman said he'd been mobbed in the past. He claimed it was because he was known to give cash to the poor. There have been times they climbed the vehicle on every side and surrounded the car, you can't move. The service was being held in a middle-class neighbourhood called Festac, on the outskirts of the city. Tonight's service was called a crusade. It's a special promotional event where Dr. Fireman appears at a local branch to help win new converts. Whatever you came here looking for, you will find. Yeah. The sermon was all about how to get rich through God. 
This is known as prosperity preaching. I've discovered the secret in God for the higher life. Get what I'm saying? But many of us are still living at the lower life. You he teaches prosperity as a sign of spiritual blessing, and the key to becoming rich is to give money to the church. He calls this sowing the seed, but it doesn't end there. You can sow your seed just anywhere. A wrong ground produces the wrong harvest. For this to work, it seemed important to give to the right person. The pastor in charge of this branch gave testimony of how fireman has changed his life. I was very poor and wretched. I wasn't even a pastor. And he saw me from the gutter and picked me up. In five months, I got three cars. It happened like magic. I started getting money like that. I wasn't dressing like this before. Those that know me some years ago will know. And I don't wear gold beach wash. And I don't wear designer style. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, the message was donating money would be a shortcut to achieving your material dreams. I want to see people driving a Lamborghini. Yeah. I want to see somebody walk out of this place today and you buy your Bentley. I've spent a long day with Dr. Fireman and I really feel like I'm starting to understand him. He sells himself brilliantly, he markets himself brilliantly, he's incredibly charismatic and even though his performance seems just as crude and manipulative to me as it did on Sunday, he's upstairs and he's winning over a whole new congregation. Local journalist Simon Ateba has spent the last five years covering the rise of these new churches. He said that while some were genuine, well-run operations, it was almost impossible to establish their true wealth. Oh, Chris Oyakilo, man, he's the business pastor. He has churches in South Africa, churches in the US, in Houston in the US, churches in England, churches in other African countries. He has businesses, he has printing press, he has television station, has newspaper, has magazine. Yeah, that's the church. Yeah. Simon took us to the headquarters of the pastor's church, Christ Embassy. Two years ago, he tried to get some photographs of the building. I was with a photojournalist and we were about taking a picture of this church from this side of the road. They dragged us inside and they beat me until I fainted. I was arrived in the hospital. Why do they want to attack journalists like that? You know, only the pastor knows how much money they are getting. So they are trying to hide all those things, trying to hide how much money they are making. We wanted to speak to Christ Embassy, but a security guard stopped us from filming. There's security, okay. Then I was dragged inside the church. Probably about 10 security guards came over and dragged me by the belt into their building. It was almost exactly the, the situation that Simon Ateba described to me this morning. But luckily, I didn't end up getting beaten up. Christ Embassy later told us they were too busy to be interviewed. We contacted all the wealthiest churches, but only one would speak to us. It's called the Household of God. This whole street is called Household of God Street because it's owned by the church. It's run by Reverend Chris Ocotier, a former pop star who had hits in the 80s with records such as Secret Love and Show Me Your Backside. Morning, Pastor. Morning. In 1984, he found God set up his own church and is now reported to be worth six million pounds. His 5,000 member congregation come from the wealthier elements of Nigerian society, film stars, celebrities and musicians. There were security guards everywhere. It seems that most of the people here have come to see him using his talents and he does so brilliantly. The majority of this service is him singing and dancing on stage and of course, talking in tongues. Hey, 
Tunare da lima na ste Kilaba, Zilaba, Rima Na ste rina wate tunamini kede Rekere, kede, akaraba Kampa duri maka the congregation may have been wealthier than Dr. Fireman's, but the message was the same. If you follow the laws of giving and of sowing and reaping, then you begin to prosper materially. Through prosperity preaching and the success of his church, he built a power base that enabled him to contest the last three presidential elections. Nigeria is a rich nation. It's just that the leaders would not give what the people desire to them because they're corrupt leaders. Nigeria has, over the years, been failed by its leaders. They've made themselves wealthy. You see them driving around with, with huge convoys. But when I look at the religious leaders, with all due respect, yourself yes. included, yes. I don't see anything different. The difference is that we practice a philosophy that guarantees prosperity. God has offered an alternative, a church, where there's equality, there is prosperity, there is hope, there is faith. Choose. Cotier's success was an example of the potential path ahead for Dr. Fireman. Before leaving Nigeria, I wanted to speak to him again. He was in the music studio recording a track, an expansion of the perfect Christianity ministry into the music business. Why did God choose you? You want to die. I don't, I don't, I don't. At the recording session, I asked him about what I'd seen during my time with him. People believe in miracles, and it's quite easy to use their belief to make yourself rich, and that's what I see you, you, you doing. Was Jesus poor? Jesus was a poor man, yes. He was not. Jesus had nothing. No, it's a lie. You don't know the Bible. Jesus had nothing. It's not true. His followers had, had things which they gave I have, to him. I have. Jesus had nothing of his it's own. It's not true. I have the Bible here. We can open it and go through if there is time. Jesus was rich and had an accountant that followed him in the name of Judas Iscariot. Jesus was poor and humble, being the key point okay, there. He was humble. Let me ask a if, question. If Jesus lived now, he wouldn't drive a bright yellow Hummer. If I'm humble, God will bless me. You say Jesus touched people, the sick. You watch me in church, I laid hands on the sick. I should say, for the sake of honesty, that what I saw in the church, I didn't believe for a second. That's the reason why it's divine healing. Ninety percent of the pastors in the world wouldn't believe you. It's, it's not true. The ones who came and were desperate, they left in exactly the same desperate state they came in. Well, I don't understand what you're saying. Surrounding yourself with bodyguards and driving a big yellow hummer, it's all part of the deception. It's all part of the, the thing that blinds people and that convinces people that you are special. And that's why they run after you. That's why they want to touch you. That's why they throw money at your well, feet. Well, in the Bible, for material blessings, the Bible teaches for you to sow in order for you to have a harvest. It's a fundamental principle of the doctrine of the Word of God. <laughs> Like many other Nigerian pastors, Dr. Fireman's obsession with wealth is a key part of his religion. It defines his existence and sense of self-worth. It's what he promotes to others, and he seems to genuinely believe that it's the way to spiritual enlightenment. Prosperity has always been the holy grail of Nigerian society. Now, it seems, running your own church has become just another way to achieve the Nigerian dream. Jay Rhodes reporting on the growing ministry and bank balance of Dr. Sine Fireman. Next week, Peter Oborn goes to Russia to investigate the often bizarre personality cult around Vladimir Putin. As he gets ready to run for president again, we follow the mass youth movement dedicated to protecting him and his allies. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>